Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeap.com. So uh, I wanted to give a little update on the uh, Burton Mill. Um, as you recall in the last video, completely disassembled it except for a couple of uh, sub-assemblies I left and we'll address those when we get to them. So I've been, um, I've been uh, degreasing, um, stripping, uh, uh, de-rusting, priming, uh, where you know it needs it and painting so I, I've been working on parts and I uh, I don't want to bore you to death with uh, with that stuff you know about uh, about the process but now I realize that sometimes there are new people watching and uh, you know they just want to get an idea of hey what what are you doing or, or what process are you taking so uh, I think I'm just gonna cover it real briefly in this video uh, just to give the process that, that I'm using like I said uh, my Kind of what I've been doing is uh, I've been degreasing, and then uh, after I degrease, I'll strip, and then after I strip, if, if I need to de-rust, I'll de-rust, and then after that, if it's a if it's a cast iron part, I've just been painting it with uh, with the uh, paint. If it's an aluminum part, um, I like to put a little etch primer on there because you know aluminum has a hard time holding on to paint anyway. So, and I was kind of surprised to find out that. Uh, the base was uh, aluminum and if you look over my shoulder here you'll see that I got a few parts um, done the base and, and another piece and other parts uh, are degreased and de-rusted and, and ready to go and, and there's more to do and so the mills kind of scattered all over um, the shop is very very uh, very cramped so for those of you guys who are waiting for some other videos uh, they'll get there but I gotta get uh, I gotta get some of this I gotta get the mill out of the way first so, all right, so let me uh, let me bring you over in here into the part washer and uh, let's talk about degreasing. So I'll catch you here in just a second. It occurred to me in the last video that I mentioned that I bought this uh, part washer, but what I failed to mention was, it was actually uh, my son and I split the cost of this. He's got parts to wash, I got parts to wash, so we thought it'd be a nice uh, nice thing to get. And, and I probably should have mentioned that he, he paid for half of it. Um, so now instead of using uh, water soluble degreasers, I use paint thinner, right? And uh, the worst case uh, that's going to happen is I'm going to uh, destroy the little cheap pump in here. And, and when I do, I'll just replace uh, the pump. So uh, let me turn this on. And uh, you'll see here that uh, hopefully this is in frame. I got a couple pieces here. These are just my samples I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give. I got more in a... It's soaking down here so I like to degrease first right so I'm just gonna I'm basically just gonna sit here and and uh, scrub with my brush and until all the greases or oil is off of it right because uh, then the paint stripper doesn't have to work as hard right so that's that's what I do and I'm not gonna sit here and make you uh, watch me degrease parts but here you get the idea you know I'm just using the pump on the uh, on the part washer just you know spray it onto the part as I take my brush and sometimes you know, I'll, I'll use this little cheap uh, brass brush here you know to clean some more of the stubborn part and I got some brushes over there and so you, you get the idea so that's uh, that's what I'm gonna do here I'm gonna degrease these two parts right here that you see are painted and uh, then I'll uh, I'll bring the camera in and and show you what's next. So I'll catch you in just a second. Okay, once I've uh, degreased the parts, I uh, take them out of the degreaser, and I'll either let them air dry, or if I'm in a hurry, I'll just take a paper towel and dry the extra solvent off. Um, my intention here is just to, you know, <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm gonna strip the paint next, right? So I just you know I just I don't want uh, a lot of uh, solvent on there. You know, you could take an air hose and blow this off or, you know, you dry it off or you can let it air dry or whatever, you know, however you want to handle it. So, um, so the next thing that I do, uh, generally is, uh, is, uh, begin to strip. So now I know you guys, plenty of you guys seen citrus strip. This is a, uh, this is a safe, um, stripper, um, supposed to be non-toxic or whatever. I don't think I'd drink it or anything. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do next. Now, you know, it says uh, paint it on there, leave it, and check it after an hour or so, but I don't do that. You know, I don't get a whole lot of time in my shop. Um, so what I generally do 
is uh, I paint it on there real good, nice heavy coat, and then I wrap it up in a, in a Walmart bag. God knows we got piles of these, and I only do that simply because, uh, you know, it uh, keeps all the uh, air from it from drying it out, and I can let it set for a day or more, and I think it strips better, so, um, you know, it is what it is, and I use uh, just a cheap brush, so let's get this set up. And you'll notice here in the back, this is some other stuff that's uh, either been stripped, waiting to be stripped, been cleaned, or, or whatnot. So, you know, it's got a ways to go. So, like I said, I'm not stingy with this stuff. You know, I want a nice, thick coat on it. And it does smell good. I actually like the smell of it. You know, it's got that citrus smell. I know some people don't like that smell. You know, they like citrus, citrus hand cleaners and stuff. They're like, dude, everything smells like a dang orange and it stinks. But it hey, don't bother me. I got six of one, half a dozen of another. You know how it is. So, so like I said, I'm going to put this on here. I'm going to put a nice, you know, I'm not going to be stingy with it. You know, this stuff's not free, but, you know, if you're not stingy with it, it'll, it'll cut the paint pretty good. And at least that's what I'm noticing. So I'm going to go ahead and do this piece here too. Hopefully I'm not blocking the view. But I'm just going to paint that on there real good. Okay. Both sides. Just like that. Now set that in there and we'll let that go to town. So now what I like to do is I like to bring the the bag up and really kind of wrap it in there and tuck it in so that there's no air trapped in it or very little. And I'll just let that sit and um, go till uh, tomorrow and I'll come out and strip that. So uh, I might wait and bring the camera out and you can see that part just so that you can see a little continuity. So I'll uh, catch you then. Okay, so this is it's the next day and this has been sitting wrapped up in this plastic uh, not quite 24 hours, but several hours. And uh, if we open it up and take a look and see what we got, looks like the citrus dip is starting to work pretty good there. Hopefully, I got that in frame. So what I normally do is I just take a I just take a wire brush and you see it takes it right down to to bare metal. Now, what I, after I brush the bulk of this off, I'll take this outside to the uh, hose and really give it a good scrubbing and and then if there's any paint left you know I'll I'll apply a you know another coat um, to take it off and you know but anyway I think citrus strip does a great job provided it has ample time to do its uh, work right so that paint is stuck a little bit better but you can see that it's it's coming right off so uh, I won't take the camera outside because it's uh, it's about 99% humidity. But I will uh, I will come back in and show you what they look like. So I just use a you know I'll use a putty knife or use one of these little paint scrapers here, one of these little wire brushes, and uh, generally speaking, it all comes off quite well. Now this looks like it might need two coats because I'm seeing a coat of gray underneath and this is not, I think this is a casting that was bought. Um, you know, as a replacement or a later time. So anyway, let me uh, get these cleaned up and wash it up some and then I'll bring you back in. Okay, so I have, uh, I have these scrubbed off. So this is a cover for the um, uh, the the auto feed gearbox. Now I know for a fact that this cover does not. It needs going to need some adjustment, some filing or fitting or something because it doesn't quite fit uh, my gearbox. And another thing I noticed is that um, the castings on this machine were two different colors. There was that green color, um, 
and then the gray color of the main body. So I think the green color castings were castings that were probably acquired for the machine, you know, because they were missing somebody trying to put one together. Anyway, that's, that's what these two castings were. So this one's actually stripped pretty good. Now because this is a, a die cast or aluminum or whatever, I will, uh, I'll take this and, and I'll make sure that I hit it with a good coat of um, uh, primer, et, uh, etching primer, you know, before I actually paint it. So uh, nice thing about my shop is that uh, right now it's 46% uh, humidity. I don't have much of an issue with flash rust, but what I generally do is uh, for my iron parts is I'll just wipe them down with some mineral spillets, spirits to, uh, you know, to remove any water uh, from it. And uh, they tend to do okay for, you know, several days before I get in here and get a chance to paint. So I want to set this aside. Now this here has uh, several coats of paint on it. You can see some black or dark gray or something in there that uh, didn't quite strip off. So what I'll do is the same process as I done uh, yesterday is I'll, uh, I'll lather this back up and I'll put it back in the bag and I'll come back tomorrow. Uh, maybe when I get off work and uh, finish the rest of it off. So after that, uh, this is a, mating, a machine mating surface. Um, it is just a, a mating surface, but I will leave it plain. And I'll probably go ahead and stick it in the evapo rust uh, just to remove any, any traces of rust. And, and of course, you know, I'll have to chase the threads and that sort of stuff and get it painted. And then it'll go into the pile of freshly painted bits. So I think that's pretty much everything. You know, I've talked about degreasing um, using the uh, part washer with uh, paint thinner. I think it's uh, Chris uh, Anderson from uh, uh, Old Iron Shop says, hey, you know, if you don't have a part washer, get one, you just won't regret it. And I think he's right. Although it did cost me more for the paint thinner than it did the, the part washer, just, to, <laughs> just as an aside. So anyway, degrease and then, uh, you know, a strip. Showed you this process here. Now, this little segment that I'm talking here is a little bit out of sync, but um, you get the idea. And then uh, de-rust and then uh, prime and or paint. And then when I get to the, uh, again, like I said, when I get to the uh, machined ways and things like that, when I go to clean those up, I'll uh, talk about those later. For now though, I've just, uh, I have uh, degreased and de-rusted and then I've uh, soaked them in WD-40, you know, as a water displacer and just set them on the shelf. Um, so far, so good, no flash rust. Uh, they'll probably be good until I can uh, get to them. Okay, for painting, I'm using, uh, Velspar anti-rust armor. Now the color that this is tentable paint and the color chip that I picked out actually had a green tint to it um, but you know and after after getting it I discovered that uh, I, they must have read the wrong chip or something because uh, you see the you see the paint here it definitely doesn't have a green tint and if anything it might have a slight blue tint to it but <clears throat> I've already paid for it and I've already opened it and spread some and and I'm not super unpleased with the uh, with the uh, color so here's one thing I want to say um, about this paint this paint covers pretty good they recommend two coats and it takes two coats to get nice coverage uh, unless you're painting something that's been primed so either you're gonna have to prime and then give it a coat uh, or if you're painting bare metal with it like I am with the cast iron um, you'll have to give it two coats and so and, you know the the castings the cast iron castings you know they're rough enough that uh, uh, you know it's they'll, they'll be fine the paint's going to adhere to it and I don't think there's gonna be a little problem aluminum on the other hand you know it um, it uh, tends to you know doesn't paint well uh, so usually I try to use a, like an etching primer, a decent etching primer on aluminum and then and then paint it. So uh, when I done that with uh, the base, I only took one coat. Um, but now because I'm not priming with, uh, with the uh, castings, it takes two coats. That's okay. Alright, so uh, you'll notice that I have an unusual brush here, right? A very small brush. Um, while a one inch or two inch or inch and a half brush is uh, works fine. 
I discovered that I'm just a little neater if I just use a smaller brush, right, and take just a little bit longer to paint. So this is a three quarter inch uh, flat artist brush. It's kind of nice because, um, you know, I don't I don't get it so so sopped up full of paint that I'm I'm filling um, uh, screw holes and stuff like that. So so here's the uh, here's the process. Uh, this uh, bottom of this has got two coats on it. Top has got one coat. I'm gonna give it another coat. Uh, this is uh, this is unpainted uh, sound uh, paint. It's not completely stripped, but it's sound right there. Um, now, the way I work is that if it's a bearing uh, surface or a machine surface, I generally don't paint it. Okay. Um, so you you know my the gut feeling is like well this has been machined but this is just where the motor bolts to there's there's no precision or anything here so I'm going to go ahead and paint this anyway uh, you'll notice like here I have the uh, have the machine surfaces are all taped up and covered up so um, that's where we're gonna go so let me uh, let me paint this and uh, I'll do this in fast forward I won't play any music like old Mr Appleton but um, this works pretty good for me. And one thing I notice about this paint is that uh, when it dries, the uh, brush marks really seem to settle out of it. So I'm, I'm not had too much problem with that. So. Okay, that's been first coated. Uh, I'll give it a second coat uh, after it dries. Uh, I usually let it drive 12, 12, 14, 16 hours at least, uh, usually 24 hours. The next day I'll come out and, and it's hardened up enough to give it a coat. That stuff takes about, um, I think about uh, seven to 10 days to fully harden off uh, before you can put any weight uh, or any moisture on it. So, but then again, I, I've got the time. All right, so that's that's the painting bit in a nutshell. Uh, let me show you uh, what I use for de-rusting and, and uh, I'll bring you in, uh, let me clean this up and I'll bring you in just a minute. Okay, so there are parts that need to, you know, that had some surface rust or some rust on it that uh, I wanted to remove. And I had really kind of in my mind a couple options. I could, uh, I could uh, get out the uh, washing soda and the battery charger and set up some electrolyte and, and, uh, and rust them electrically, right? Um, or I can use some sort of chemical. So I thought, well, you know what, I'm just uh, in, in, the, in, in the essence of saving time and that sort of stuff, I would just use the chemical. So I bought a gallon of evaporust, right? Now, what I did discover was that uh, evaporust is not exactly cheap. You know, it was uh, after taxes about uh, 25 bucks or so, give or take. Um, but I knew right away that one gallon wasn't gonna be enough, so I went ahead and bought two more gallons. So now I've got a little money invested. Uh, so in this container, um, below this empty bottle of, of evaporust, I have the column, okay? So let me, uh, let me, pause you here for just a second and take the lid off of the tank and in there and show you what I've done. Okay, so I found a container that was big enough to hold the uh, column and I've got the column in there and I've got the overarm support in there and I'm de-rusting things but there was no way uh, I could get enough evaporust to you know totally submerge these parts, right? It would have taken me 10 gallons or more and, and it's just more money than I was willing to spend which gives me a, a lot of respect for vintage machinery. You know, he's, he's uh, restoring that planer. And if you see the size of the vat of a vat rust he has, I'd hate to know how much money he's got in there, you know, that, that, uh, that uh, Mr. Rucker's got in there. But uh, I am enjoying that uh, series. So what I've elected to do, I've laid it down there so some of it's submerged. And what I've done is I've taken... Um, uh, shop towels right and I've draped them down in there I've soaked them and then covered it and left the ends of the shop towels down in there so that they will continually wick up and keep them wet so that's what you're seeing there and then this is really probably ready to take out and clean out now the only thing that uh, the column won't be getting is a I don't know of a good way to evaporate the inside of the column right so I think I'm just gonna um, see what I can do with it or if I'm not too happy with it maybe I'll just come back and electrically uh, you know electrolysis uh, de-rest this 
or just leave it be as long as the outside is 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 nice and open so anyway so that's what i've been using for um for de-rusting parts you know if i can completely if i can choose a container and completely submerge the part uh that's what i do uh otherwise you know i got to do something like this here so that's uh that that's the process so you've seen me degrease uh you've seen me apply the paint stripper and at the end of this video we'll strip it off take a look at it you, you've seen paint and de-rusting so that's really the uh the process that I'm going through and I'm, I'm not going to uh, talk any more about that stuff. I might talk about uh, the ways cleaning ways and machine services uh, a little bit um, in a video but um, the next thing I want to do is uh, after the base and the column are done I need to uh, start thinking about a bench and uh, so let me let me show you so let me bring the camera in and show you something and let me just get into let me get an opinion from you guys, okay? So I'll catch you here in just a second. So over here, you know, my little Chinese drill press sits uh, on this metal cabinet. Now this is a fairly heavy duty metal cabinet. And where you see the top there, you know, it's three quarter inch. I would pull that off and add two layers of solid door, which would give me about a three inch top. Now that will still allow the, uh, the knee screw to protrude into that drawer space so that's potentially a problem it's something i'll have to remember to make sure that the knees up if i'm going to want to open that drawer all the way or maybe not use it at all so my question is do you think that's a viable option to use as a base uh, for the uh, burke mill or should i go ahead and build a a wooden a wooden uh, bench i can build a wooden bench fairly heavy with like three by three legs and you know, three quarter inch uh, uh, ply and and uh, you know three inch top and yada yada yada. Uh, so one of the drawbacks that was suggested to me and uh, I respect this guy a lot. It says, hey, look, man, what's what you're going to happen is, you know, you're you're going to run that mill and there's a lot of vibration and that's going to things are going to rattle, vibrate, and it's going to drive you crazy. I would just build the wooden bench. So that's that's one opinion. So leave something down here in the comments and tell me what you think. Uh, if you think that this metal cabinet, right, uh, would serve as a bench for the Burke Mill, um, or should I just go ahead and build a wooden bench, maybe about that size? So uh, just leave it in the uh, uh, in the uh, comments. So let me uh, say one more, a uh, little bit here in closing, and then uh, we'll get this video posted. Okay, guys. Hey, thanks for being so patient with me. I know this Burke Mill. I know all my videos are really slow. And then, you know, I got the junk emporium here, right, uh, with stuff everywhere. So hopefully, you know, with the new cabinets that I get in and some organizing, I can get it a little bit better. I've not forgot about uh, the uh, little engine build. I just can't get to it. I've got it piled up. So, but I do have a practice piece and, and stuff to, to practice on uh, before I um, actually make the, uh, the, the boiler uh, silver soldering video. But that's not about that. So hey, look. Um, let me know what you think about uh, uh, about the, using the metal cabinet or building a, or just building a bench for the Burke Mill. What, what do you think would be best? If I build the bench, obviously I can put uh, uh, two little small drawers uh, to each side of the uh, knee screw, right? So they can open and they'll never be interfered with. So that's kind of a thing there. Uh, I do like the feel and look of wood grain. I do. I, I know it's not heavy, um, but that's what I got and that's what I can easily work and, and I have some. So let, let me know what you think. Um, so that's it's just more of the same. I'll, uh, I'm going to continue to, to degrease, uh, de-rust, strip, prime, paint, and that sort of thing until I get all the ports, uh, parts uh, done. And then um, when, when I come back, we're, we're gonna uh, we'll start assembly, or I'm gonna probably uh, talk about how to disassemble the the knee crank uh, and uh, that assembly, um, just so that uh, people know knows how that comes apart. It's actually a pretty interesting little assembly. Um, so I'll probably uh, do another video on that, and then you know get to the point where um, you know make uh, the, have the bench, and then we'll start reassembly on the bench, and then we'll take. Uh, a deep dive into each part as we as we uh, put it together. Uh, so one last question, and uh, I'll let you guys alone. 
uh, if I'm building a wooden bench, does anybody want to see any of that? Anybody going to be interested in that or just say, hey, just build the thing and, and we'll see it after it's built? Let me know. Uh, post down in the uh, comments and let me know. Um, give me your opinion. I, I appreciate it. So, hey, look, if these uh, videos entertain you or, you've, or, or they, if they're helpful, you know, uh, please consider liking and subscribing or sharing. Um, I appreciate those. And please comment. I, I just I love the comments and the interactions and, uh, and everything that goes along with it. So I just I really appreciate you guys. You, uh, you've made uh, this newbie experience of uh, Metal Shop really quite, quite uh, pleasant. And I, I thank all of you for that. So, hey, other than that, have a blessed day.